This cannon isn't supposed to vanish like the last one did. At least, that's what I hoped and told myself. But now I know better. We pushed it through five tests until it got dark, and you're about to see every single one. That was the first test, an RC cola can. It exploded, of course. But what I didn't realize at the time was just how powerful this cannon really is. All right, here are the parts I'm working with. A steel chamber, a couple of plumbing pieces, nothing fancy but together they'll be strong enough for what's coming. It's funny how simple it looks now, because in a few minutes this thing will feel way more dangerous than it should. You already saw the first test at the very start of this video, but that was only the beginning. There are four more shots waiting, and each one is stronger than the last. This cannon might look small, but every time the fuse burns down, it shows just how much power is packed inside. And by the end, you'll see why this little build is way more dangerous than it looks right now. This cannon is running on pure match heads, and that makes it completely different from the ones you've seen before. Those cannons fired once and blew apart, but this one, it stays together, it means you'll get to see it fire more than once, and every shot will hit harder than you think. You're not even seeing the real limit yet. It got dark before I could bring out stronger materials, so this test is just the start. This build even has a wheelbase. The wheels don't change how it fires, they're just for style but they give the cannon a strong aggressive look like it's ready to roll into battle. It reminds me of a man who once tried to make roller skates out of bricks. He glued little handles on top, slid his feet in, and called them unbreakable skates. The first step he took, the ground shook, and the skates didn't roll an inch. But he still showed them off like he'd built the future of skating. That's the same kind of energy here. The wheels aren't practical but they make this little cannon look tougher than it should, and when it fires the power is real. The last shot hit so hard, I'm sure this cannon could punch through wood, maybe even plywood, and that's exactly what we'll be testing in the next videos. Stay tuned, because this is only getting more extreme. Never cut fuses with metal scissors. Scissors can create static electricity, and one tiny spark is enough to light the fuse in your hands. Always use a knife, or even better, a wooden knife. It might look slow, but it keeps things safe. It actually reminds me of a man who once tried to cut everything in his workshop with a wooden ruler. He said metal tools were too dangerous. He pressed and scraped until the ruler snapped, and then he taped it back together and kept going like nothing happened. It didn't work well, but he swore it was the safest system ever invented. And that's the same kind of thinking here. Using a wooden knife might feel strange, but safety comes first. I'm also working on something new, an air cannon. Most of the parts are already here, and I'm just waiting for a few more to arrive before I can put everything together. The part that really matters is the valve, because I don't want something slow that just hisses air out. I want a design that opens instantly and dumps all the pressure in one clean shot. The kind of release that makes the difference between a weak puff of air and a blast that feels like a hammer strike. Once it's finished, this build is going to take testing to a completely different level. And when you see it fire for the first time, you'll understand why I've been calling this one of the craziest projects I've ever tried. Now I'm loading the match heads into the chamber. I cut them before and it doesn't take long at all but the result makes it worth every second. Once they're in place, this little cannon has far more power than you'd expect from such simple parts. There was once a man who spent days cutting up hundreds of paper clips. He said he was building the world's first paper clip chain armor. He wore it proudly, jingling with every step but the first time he tried to bend down, the whole thing snapped apart and fell to the floor. He called it a test run, but everyone else just called it nonsense, and that's kind of the deal here. Cutting match heads into tiny pieces might look like busy work, but when you see what this chamber can do once it's packed, you'll understand why it's worth the time. Sometimes the smallest details decide everything. You think it doesn't matter? But one loose part, one weak connection, and the whole thing fails before it even starts. That's why I take time here, even if it looks slow. Because the difference between a project that just fizzles out and one that shocks you is usually hidden in these quiet moments. And while it might not look exciting yet, trust me, what's coming next will make you glad you waited. Right now I'm getting the cannon ready. This metal fitting has to be tightened down hard onto the plywood, because when the pressure builds up, even the smallest leak could ruin the whole shot. It's not the prettiest setup, but the strength is what matters here, and this part has to hold.
Next we'll try shooting a cola glass bottle. The can was easy, it shattered right away, but this is different. Glass takes more force, and I honestly wasn't sure if the cannon could handle it. But once this shot was fired, I knew the real tests were just beginning, and what comes after this bottle is on a completely different level. While we were shooting at the cola bottle, I started thinking about something crazier, and then I found it. I had two lighters sitting on the table, and the idea hit me instantly. So for the next test, I placed both of them right in front of the cannon, and what happened after that was way beyond what I expected. In our last test I'm going to shoot a cola can straight through 4 millimeters of organic glass. A simple can doesn't sound like much, but once it's pushed with the full power of this cannon, the impact is something else. And if it can punch through glass this thick, then you already know we're only just scratching the surface of what's possible. The cannon survived this time, but let's see how long that luck lasts in the next video.